OK, so let's go for a ride. Let's forget about the taxi for now. Just put us on the runway at Darrington and we're going to take off and fly around the corner to concrete. So here's the briefing. We're going to put the condition lever fully forward, prop lever fully forward. Then we're going to set the power lever to about 25%. That'll give us a nice smooth takeoff without everything getting too frantic. We need to be ready on the rudder to counter the torque and slipstream effects, just like in a piston prop. Now, if you look at the torque gauge, which is our power instrument in this aircraft, just take note for now that it's already at 10%, even though we're at idle. So more on that later. OK, so let's go ahead and do all that. Now the first thing you'll notice is that very little happens. In fact, if you start counting seconds, you get to about six before anything much at all happens. You'll be at 10 before there's any real acceleration. Now the power kicks in, and if you look at the turbine gauges, you'll see that n one spooled up ever so slightly. So we fly the takeoff from here, just like a piston prop, feeding in right rudder smoothly as soon as we see the nose start to swing to the left. Keep a nice firm back pressure on the stick and lift it off anywhere after about 70 knots. And we let the speed build up and gradually add a little bit more power as we climb away. Here we're making a 270 degree left turn. That'll put us on the river going north. And we're going to start to trim for about 175, 180 knots as we roll out. We don't really need to climb very much so we can back off that power to about 25% or less as we go. So there are four gauges we need to pay particular attention to with an engine like this. Uh, these are the ITT, torque, N1 and N2. So ITT is the inter-turbine temperature, and that's basically the temperature of the jet blast driving the free turbine. Now we do not want this to go into the red, even for a few seconds or something will break. On a hot day, this is the gauge that's going to limit how much power we can dial in. The torque gauge is a direct measure of how much power the power turbine is generating. Again, we want to stay out of the red. Uh, we can run this at over 100% of nominal for a few minutes. In this aircraft, that's going to look pretty extreme. On a cold day, torque's going to top out before ITT, so we need to watch that closely as well. So the other gauges measure the power turbine speed, that's N1, and the free turbine speed, N2. N2 mostly runs at or just below 100% of nominal and it's kept there by the prop governor, regardless of how much power we ask for. We can make small changes to the prop speed with the prop lever. This is mainly to tune out vibration and noise in the cruise. So N1 is the speed of the power turbine. In a split shaft engine like the T6, uh, this speed varies according to the power requested, but it idles at around 50% or 70% according to where the condition lever is set. Uh, you can think of the condition lever as a, like a simple gear stick with two positions, or three actually. You've got cut off, ground idle and flight idle. Flight idle keeps the turbine spooled up so we get better throttle response, in theory at least. And ground idle is typically set for ground ops to save fuel uh, to keep the temperatures down. Now don't think of the condition prop and power levers as doing what they do in a complex piston aircraft. In fact, different variants of the T6 and uh, other turboprops will have different controls, but here's how it is for this engine. The condition lever is the primary fuel control, the three settings I've just described. The prop lever only adjusts the prop governor maximum speed in flight, or more correctly in the alpha range, a bit more on that in a while. Uh, the power lever adjusts the torque requested from the engine, and that feeds more fuel into the power turbine, and the prop governor increases the pitch of the prop to absorb the extra energy, and that increases how much the prop bites into the air, if you like, and so increases the forward thrust. Now I should say, this is my best interpretation of what I've read about this kind of engine, so don't quote me on that. It should give you some feel for what the levers do. So I want to talk about that lag we saw on the takeoff. That, as far as I can tell, isn't realistic, and it's one of the things that makes this aircraft so hard to fly. We don't have any problem up here, but on the approach, and even taxiing, it makes things very difficult. One of the reasons for having a flight idle setting at all is to give a better throttle response, but with the lag of several seconds rolling on or off the power, we've basically got to adapt our flying to suit. Although FSX's turboprop model is supposed to be based on the PT6 engine, by most accounts they got it wrong, and that lags one consequence of that. In practice, it's the lag in reducing power that causes the most problems, and uh, that's compounded in this aircraft, of course, by its insane sensitivity to the power setting. Now, one thing you're going to find is it's very hard even to get this aircraft into a controlled descent at any reasonable rate has a very slippery shape and there's no flaps or spoilers to dirty it up. On the other hand, if you pull the power to idle, it drops like a stone. So flying dead stick landings requires something of a precipitous approach angle, and I'm talking 70 degrees, something like that, and a very assertive and well-controlled flare, not recommended. 
Now then, if you think back to when we did the takeoff, you'll remember noting that the torque gauge never fell below 10% at flight idle, and that's one of the reasons the toucan is more or less uncontrollable in descent. The solution, or partial solution in any case, is to move the condition lever to ground idle when you enter the circuit, and uh, now you can select power settings between 0 and 10%. It's still twitchy, but it can be done. Uh, you can also, of course, play with the sensitivity settings of your controls, and uh, that's something we're going to look at in detail in uh, part three. Now, the reason the toucan plummets when you pull the power is that windmill in prop produces an enormous amount of drag, and uh, that is faithfully modelled. And in fact, you can dive vertically without breaking 150 knots in this aircraft. On the other hand, it's not possible to feather the prop, even if you shut the engine down. Of course, it looks like you can because there's a nice animation if you pull the um, prop lever when you're sitting on the tarmac with the engine off, but that's all it is, a nice animation. Now, if you want to convince yourself of this, just switch everything off, feather the prop, then slew the aircraft up to a couple of thousand feet and drop it. So obviously we're pushing the limits of the simulation here, but it's hard to believe you can't feather the prop in the real toucan if you uh, shut down the engine. So with ground idle selected, you can establish a stable descent with a modest vertical speed. And if you start a long way out, you've got enough time to tweak it. You want to look for an approach speed in the white arc, somewhere between 100 and 120 knots is good. But don't expect to just trim it and take your eye off the airspeed. You have to fly this all the way to the ground. And to find a balance point, I suggest you make small changes to the power. And uh, notice when it just begins to accelerate. It takes a lot of practice, but the aircraft is landable like this. By the way, it will fly stably all the way down to about 60 knots, although the pitch attitude makes it hard to see where you're going. Also responds well to side slipping, so you can finesse your speed and descent rate that way too. Best land with the main wheels first, so you can see where you're going and keep it absolutely straight. Now as soon as you're sure the tail wheel's on the ground, you can select full reverse and stamp on the brakes. And once the tail wheel's down, pull the stick hard back to keep it there while using reverse thrust. Now then, reverse in this aircraft is another can of worms until you figure it out. Any significant reverse thrust spins the power turbine up, and as we know it takes a while to spin back down even after you cut the power. What this usually means is you'll start shooting forwards again even if you've got your feet on the brakes. So what's going on here and how do we fix it? Well as you might remember from the startup, when the power levers are idle, uh, the props in a forward pitch. This is in the so-called alpha range of operation where all flight ops are conducted. The beta range is when the prop is cycled through a flat pitch and into reverse and we do have some control over this. Now FSX lets us dial into the beta range by pressing the decrease throttle or decrease throttle quickly keys. These are mapped respectively to the numeric keypad 3 and F2 by default. And one single key press, when the power's already at idle, puts us very slightly into the negative pitch. So, if we select full reverse and then cut the power as we reach standstill, that's by pressing F1 or putting the power lever to idle, then immediately tap the numeric 3 or F2 keys. We can just about remain stationary if we keep on the brakes while the turbine spins down. Uh, in fact, usually we creep backwards a bit. Now, this is very tricky to get right unless you automate it. And we're going to have a look at how to do that in part 3. And that's about it really. The taxi in is tricky for all the reasons we've talked about. Uh, mostly that turbine lag uh, is doable with practice. So that's all for now in part three. I'm going to look at how to set your flight controls up to address some of these niggles.